Right, I was trying to show you now how to how I did this here green screen, motion green screen. So I'll open the original file, which is that one that's a bit grey looking. And as you can see, we've got I'm being prompted here that the original file isn't there anymore. So the first thing I discovered when I looked this up was that I deleted the original files, the one of the heron and the one of the um, of myself. I open this, I'll just open it to show you that this is the basic format. Um, the, the upper video track is the one I took of myself moving. What it is actually, that's a tea tray uh, covered with the green, a, a, a proper green screen material. On video, on this lower video track, I put the two clips uh, of the one of the heron, one of myself sat in a chair. Right, the way you get chroma onto a clip, I suppose first thing. So what I'm going to do is. If I can, I'm going to remove that chroma there. Let's see what happens. If, if I right click there and delete it, so I should have I've moved removed that chroma now. And to get chroma on it, go to galleries, video effects. Uh, you have to drag that down. It's awkward using a mouse from your left hand. Right, I can see chroma key there. So I'm gonna pick that chroma key up and drag it onto that clip there. So that's added my basic chroma. And as you can as you can see now it's set to remove blue. Well there is no blue. That's the default setting, presumably that blue colour. So I need to select the green. So left click on that and hold the mouse button drag it across to the area you're selecting the colour from let go and as you can see that colour at the right now has changed to green the blue has changed to green the default settings in there as well if you look for low and high it's set zero low ten percent high and there's a blur setting uh, I'm not too familiar how you use all them but I think the basic idea is set them so that you're getting the best uh, removal. If you look now, what's happened? That there's a black area instead of the green. All that green has been removed. I took a video of some Highland dancers uh, this summer, so I've used that uh, to substitute for the other original clips I had. So I've put that on the lower track there. I'm going to use the transform settings on the track itself. So if if I if I go to that, you know, you can alter settings either on the each individual clip or on the whole track. Uh, it's probably best to work on the whole track. I think if you're going to use the clip somewhere else and you want to trans the transforms to be transferable, <laughs> perhaps select on the clip one. I don't really know. Just play it by you. And what I want to show you is I've ended up with all these little circles along here are ones that I've created in order to move the underlying video. So if I mute the top video. Now, as you can see, you can see, you'll be able to see that the un underneath video, for, for most of it, is, doesn't move. But when it passes, when we get to those, can you see the clip moving about now? It's, now it's moving right, down, up, left. The clip is actually being moved, and we'll just show the last half of that. Um, and I'll unmute the top track. So now we'll see what happens as the dancer, as I move the tray, with the dancer behind it. As you can see now, that the dancer 
and it's because this underlying video is being moved that the tray and the dancer follow each other so how did I do that well each you, for each of those settings say that one I've just selected there the I can now in the monitor I can now see a white frame which marks the outline of the underlying clip so if I select anywhere on that I, sh I should I, c I can move that frame about and if, if I move it to there for instance the dancer is no longer in the green area I need to move it, move it the, roughly to say that I keep moving it till I get the dancer I want in the position I want not sure if that's the right one now I've got the wrong dancer I think there Gosh, you can't lose <laughs> you only meant to really move this a small amount so basically that's what I'm doing I have to keep moving the uh, frame for the underlying video the, the serif calls that motion transforming um, there's different forms of motion transformation uh, you could also do it manually using the set the um, properties of the transform envelope in that right hand uh, frame um, but it's probably easier to just do it by moving this frame dragging clicking and dragging on the frame um, so that is basically it. it obviously the more the more of these points you have the smoother it, it'll become the motion let me just see what effect has been to move that frame a little bit what I just did oh I haven't messed it up too much apparently so basically that's that's what I, why, how I did it so I'll, I'll do I'll, I'll now mute the upper track So I'll start that playing and then unmute it as it as it plays. Ready to unmute now. And as you can see at the bottom, we're moving across across those things. Moving from one transform to the next. The actual these transforms actually interpolate I think that bit there linear interpolation is, is how it's uh, working out points in between the transforms and you've got these uh, preset templates you can use quadratic slow quadratic fast qu cubic smooth cubic sharp which I've not used any of those on this it's just a uh, a linear just kept that on linear also the X and Y centers and X and Y scale I've kept the original I think they are just if you want to sort of enlarge or reduce the size of the underlying video or, or move its center to a different point than 50% uh, really I don't do enough of this to be too familiar with how all them work anyway hope that helps a little bit Hope that's helpful to you. Um, hope that makes some sense. I've confused myself. Anyway, good luck with that, and thank you very much for your interest.